Welcome to Marta the Minimalist, a podcast for entrepreneurs like you, looking to minimalize your life, business, and mindset with your host, CEO, speaker, and best-selling author, Marta Saray Greca. And we're going to be live. We're live on Facebook with Jen Carrasco, who is going to tell you all about how to persevere through the roller coaster that we call entrepreneurship. And that can often feel in itself like a pandemic because it can get you into heartache. It can get you into financial burden, but it can also be a wonderful thing when you persevere through those amazingly challenging moments, you come out on the other side stronger and better. And then your story becomes the instruction manual for those that follow. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest to Marta the Minimalist's latest podcast episode, Jen Carrasco, who has her own studio empire called Virago Studio, plus her own skincare line, handmade, holistic, top-notch, be skincare and her own coaching brand because she's seen it all. She's been through it all. And she's come out on the other side as a successful high demand business coach for executives. But before I go on and on rattling off about Jen Caresco, Jen, I want you to tell them what's your story. Why should they give a shit? Why should they listen to you? <laughs> Good question, right? Um, so I'm Jen Carrasco. Um, I actually started as an entrepreneur at age 24. So I had my son at 21, bought my first million dollar company at age 24. And literally about six years later, lost it all and had to uh, re regrow it, relaunch it, relearn a lot of things in my life and to actually foresee working um, a couple more years down the road to watch myself actually file a second bankruptcy and learn even more from that. So um, there's a lot of failure and success. And I don't want to say failure because um, when bad things happen and hard things happen, it actually um, makes us stronger people and it makes us understand and cherish the hardship to where we can actually grow from that and become a better individual for ourselves and for other people and be a better role model. So, um, you know, I don't know where you want me to start, Marta. Do you want me to start right on my, I my would, journey? <laughs> I would love to hear all about your journey. Give us the, give us the juicy nuggets. I know every sure. time I hear it, I tear up. So yeah. I would, because you guys, you have to listen to the story. And every time I hear it, I feel that it's an inspirational story for anybody who's gone through hell and back and yeah. come out the other side. Yeah. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to get teary eyed right now. I'm just even thinking. So, um, I have had two failed marriages. Um, I am not a, uh, protege to tell you that I'm the best person ever in marriages and, and business, but I've actually learned quite a bit to, um, I feel be a very strong suit in every single aspect of that going forward now in my, uh, you know, early forties. Um, I started, I had my son when I was 21. I got divorced when he was three. I was in a very abusive relationship, not physically abusive, but very verbally abusive. And so my confidence as growing up as a child was very, I was very confident. I was extremely alpha female and, um, to really kind of get beaten down, um, with being married for three years was, it was definitely a struggle and a hurdle and it was hard, but I realized that I did not want my son to have that life. I did not want my son to know that that was normal to have a relationship like that. Um, I wanted better for him. And, um, I took that leap and long story short, um, I worked in a clinic. So I, I, went to school, found out I was pregnant, graduated school, long story short, started working in a clinic. And I worked with her um, for about four years. And when I left my husband, I would work six days a week, as well as clean houses on the side. And I would go in and clean her shop on the side. Um, I was making $8 an hour. I was making commission. 
And I was doing everything I possibly could to make ends meet. And I, I worked my butt off to put my son through private school and still live in an apartment with him and work as much as I did. But long story short is at age 24, um, divorced single mom, my, my person that I worked with or the, the woman that owned it realized, you know, how hard I worked. And she was a single mom at that time. And she offered me the property and the business at that point. And, um, with family and friends, I was able to, uh, come up with $90,000 to put it down and buy my first million dollar company at age 24. So this is where it comes in that it's very, very, very important for people to listen to me right now. And I say this because it's not that I'm trying to pitch myself for a coach or pitch other people for a coach. But at age 24, walking into a million dollar company that was already producing really good income and me knowing that I could take over those clients and work hard and push, but not have the knowledge of actually running a business successfully was my downfall. Mm -hmm. If I knew how to form leadership teams, how to run a team, how to have an organization, how to have core values, how to have all these structures that you need to build that team, I would probably be about a hundred times more than what I am right now. And that is why it is so crucial. So I'm going to give you a different story in the beginning, Marta, that you probably haven't heard. And this is my first story. My first story is at age 24 with buying that business, I did not know what the hell I was doing. All I knew was hard work. That was all I was taught. I wasn't taught how to run a business. I wasn't taught how to do taxes. I wasn't taught about how you, how you form a leadership team, your core values, what you give to people. And when the economy hit, I lost it all. So when we had that downfall in 2008, I watched my property that I bought at $640,000 now worth 230,000, right? My business was cut in half. So I was floating on the top, just barely making it, right? And the thing is, is that if I did not listen to everybody else, and I actually sat down and I knew what I knew now back then, I would have made it through. I mean, I would have just piled through. But the thing is, is that I listened to so many people that did not have the entrepreneur spirit, did not have that drive. They lived in a lack of what if this happened? What if that happened? And the thing is, is that you can't live like that. And the entrepreneur world, we need to live in the fact that we're going to make shit happen, regardless of what life throws at us. And so I listened to everybody else. And I literally filed bankruptcy and walked away from everything that I built to then had to completely rebuild that company all over again from scratch, right? And so for me, that was a huge, huge lesson in a life lesson of actually just pushing through the hard shit to get to the end result rather than just giving up. So I was, a, I, I was the person that gave up. I wasn't a true entrepreneur. I was the one that listened to everybody and gave up on that. And for me, looking back at that, that is something that, you know, I regret, but then it's also something that I really learned from to know going forward what we can do to help other people, you know, so they don't give up. They have that drive and they can get through that. So my, my second realm of life was opening up my second company and building that back up. And um, actually it came fairly easy to me and it was a passion. But the thing is, is that I didn't take the lessons that I learned I feel from the first time to the second time. And again, that's where I feel like a coach would have really helped me to push me in that direction to learn those things. Like I didn't read, I didn't learn about business. I didn't do any of that um, until it was, it was too late. But 
I caught myself in a second marriage. And that second marriage was a great marriage for my son at that time. I married him because he was amazing dad, not a lover, not somebody I was in love with, not somebody that I saw my future with. I did it because I saw how much my, I felt my son needed a role model and how much he was a role model for his children. And so I caught myself in this second marriage doing whatever I had to do because I felt like it was the best thing for my child, right? And falling into this, I caught myself in another cycle of jealousy, insecurity, and um, catching myself not wanting to come home. I didn't want to come home. I didn't want to get ridiculed that day for what I did or what I didn't do. And um, I found this light in bodybuilding and, you know, uh, figure competitors and, or, you know, competing. And so my life was literally my son, work, and now my fitness career, right? And um, I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to deal with my aftermath. I mean, I didn't want to deal with all that. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs, um, I think a lot of us struggle with that is the fact of always staying busy because we don't want to look at the shit we don't want to look at, right? We just put that in the back burner and we just stay busy and we don't focus on everything that actually will truly make us happy in the longevity of our life. And, um, you know, I pushed through that marriage. I was married for 10 years and it came to a point that after competing, earning my pro card, getting, um, getting yelled at and um, commented at all the time that I was doing these things for other people. It's just insecurities. It wasn't mine. And at that age, I mean, I was still in my later twenties, early thirties. We don't know then we don't know that that's their insecurities, not ours. Mm -hmm. We take that on ourselves. You know, it's a learning lesson. And um, it was about, my son was about 15 15, 16 years old. And um, I decided that, you know what, I've had enough of this. I can't do this anymore. I can't live my life like this anymore. I am absolutely miserable. And um, I asked for a divorce. And um, with that divorce, and this is the story you've heard is with that divorce, um, I got accepted into the Arnold Australia around the same time that I, I asked for the divorce. So um, I moved out of my house in a day. My girlfriend showed up that morning with a U-Haul, literally moved me out, um, had to transition my son. It, I mean, it, it was hard. It was, it was a wreck. He was what, 15, 16, the middle of, you know, adolescent age and, um, my ex decided to turn a lot of people against me with competing. So as a bodybuilder, we have that stigma that, you know, we're on roid rage, right? Or we're on steroids or we're on all this, all this stuff. And um, I'm not to say that a lot of people aren't, a lot of people are. Um, and so he, he utilized a lot of that to his advantage to m- manipulate a lot of my friends and people around me. So getting ready for the honor of Australia, long story short was with all of the, all of the spillover from our divorce. Um, my son walked out of my house and moved in with his dad. Now my son, I raised on my own since he was a little kid, no help, nothing. It was me and him. So to have your best friend and your child literally walk out and disown you is the hardest thing that a mother can ever deal with. To watch that happen, to watch all my friends leave, to watch um, my, my sponsorship with my gym literally dwindle in front of me and not pay for any of my competitions to my parents checking in on me, thinking that I'm not okay, that I'm mentally damage from a supplement that I'm taking to get ready for a show um, to my ex-husband now coming after my business. Um, It was a whirlwind. It hit me extremely hard. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what Jen does. And I'm just going to keep working hard because I knew that. And it was 
it was that inner voice in me that just stepped in and I finally listened to it. Instead of everybody else, I listened to myself and it was, Jen, you have to push through this. You have to keep doing this. And um, I didn't know how I was going to make it to Australia. I had no money. I was working seven days a week. I felt like I was losing my business. Um, all the money that I, that I made went into everything else. Um, long story short, I never received child support ever for 16 years. My ex-husband then came after me for child support. So now I have to pay him child support because I work and he didn't. So now I have to pay child support on top of rent, on top of business expenses. And it was like, what do I do? And at that point, he was coming after my company. It, it was a long story short. I mean, it was, there was more to the story. It was the house, the, you know, everything else. And I had to claim a bankruptcy again and I had to walk away from my business again at that point. Um, during all this, I am getting ready for Arnold Australia. So three weeks before my show, um, I come down with shingles. So if many of you know, shingles are because you're stressed, right? It's, you know, your, your, your body's fighting a lot that's going on. So now I'm down. I mean, I was down to like 5% body fat, getting ready for a show three weeks out. And I come down with shingles. Everybody, even my coach at that point told me not to compete, to stop. And, um, I didn't, and I didn't listen to anybody and it hurt like hell. And it was the worst pain I've ever dealt with. But the only thing is I, I kept getting that talk, you know, that, that, um, how, how do I say it like that, that just inner that, voice. that inner voice in me. Thank you. That just said, you know, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And, um, I did it and I pushed through and, you know, I still remember going to bed at night and thinking if I don't wake up, it is okay. I have nothing to live for anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. I have lost everything. It really does not matter at this point, but for some reason I knew I had to do that show. Mm -hmm. Like it was just like that driving force. And, um, I went and did that show, competed in that show and was up against girls that were on fitness magazine, oxygen magazine. I mean, I met amazing people and I'm not saying just because I did that show that all of these things happened, but I think it was because I listened to that inner voice that told me just to push through all of the bullshit to the fact that when I came back from that show, um, I really sat down with myself and I did the inner work and I felt, I figured out what is Jen? What is Jen's happy place? Where does Jen belong? What are the things that Jen needs for her future? And I really sat down and I started doing my research and I started, I started working on Jen. I started traveling. Um, I downsized my business. I entered a medical clinic. Um, I, I went to Thailand, I went to Greece, I went to Australia again. I just really took that time to figure out what I needed for my future. And literally when I sat down and was at peace and I said, this is what I want. And I started making my affirmations and I started making my goals of what I wanted for my future. It all started coming in. Mm -hmm. It was like night and day. Mm -hmm. It was, I look back at those times and you know what? They were the hardest times. But then again, I feel like that was the breaking point of Jen to really understand how much shit I can take to where when I step into a room, I am confident with myself because I know what I can achieve and I know what I can do. And I don't need anybody else to tell me anything about myself to make me feel good about myself anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think a lot of people lack. A lot of people need people to tell them how great they are without knowing how good they, they are themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. you know, so, that's amazing. I don't mean to cut you off, but I no, just want yeah. to know if if somebody is going through something like that, where they're at the breaking point and they just want to quit, what would you tell them? 
What would you tell them are like three things they can do to re-motivate themselves? Yeah. So at that point, um, when I, if I were to look back now, I would have sat down with myself and envisioned my future self. What are the things that if I close my eyes and I look at myself where I want to be from now, a year from now, does that align with my vision that I'm currently at, right? Mm -hmm. How can I get to that person that I want to be, that I envision to be? And the thing is, is that you need to make sure that you're in a line with that person that you want to be. So maybe your business isn't the structure that you need it to be, to be aligned with who you want to be. So maybe you need somebody to step in and say, hey, we can tweak these things to get you to where you want to be without giving up your purpose of your passion of what you love, right? Mm -hmm. So I love skincare. I love educating. I love doing those aspects, but I've learned so much in business that I want to give back in business. I've learned so much in nutrition education that I want to give back, but I still want to pursue my passion in beauty, right? So how can I implant that in going forward? So I always start off people that literally don't know where they want to be. And, um, you know, they feel like they have this passion, but they're, they're in a brain fog. I say, you know, write down the five things that you're extremely talented for. Mm -hmm. What are the five things that you're talented And what are the five things that you're passionate about? Mm -hmm. And how can we intertwine the things that you're talented with to the passion that you have? And how can we grow that? And um, a lot of times people just need a vision and they'll push beyond that point of giving up because now they're excited about that future vision of what they are and what their company or what their business strategies are going to be. I know that was a long detailed. No, I love that. So if you are listening uh, and you are on a platform where you can comment, I do invite you to comment with what are five things that you are good at? You are, you know, you're good at, you're naturally good at. And what are five things that you have a passion about? And perhaps those two can merge. And that would be a good starting point. Can you tell me a story of a client that maybe was at that point where they were were kind of like not firm on the ground with what they wanted and what their mission and what their passion was, and you helped them through it and they felt amazing afterwards? Absolutely. So I actually had a call last week with somebody who is um, brand new and, um, they don't have a business at all. They work for somebody, but they know that they don't want to work hard anymore because they've already broken down their body. They've already been to a point. So this is based in construction, right? So I do own electrical contracting company. So this, this person is based around a contracting atmosphere. But the thing is, is that he doesn't have any education or knowledge to open up his business. He doesn't have, you know, he has... He has what he's passionate about, but he's so scared about what he can do going forward because he's never been there before, right? He's never opened a business. He's never done any of that before. And it was like, okay, write down the five things that you're really good about. What are the five things that you're passionate about? And long story short, we really broke it down to where, and I know from even my electrical contracting company is we would love to hire contractors to come in to oversee projects just to make those sure those projects are running efficiently and you're dialing in those people and you're making everybody accountable at that job because we don't have the staff to be able to do that for each job, right? Mm-hmm. But I would love to hire a contractor that we can 1099 that that's their specialty. Well, guess what? That's what we found out his specialty was because we dialed down the niche and it was like, okay, now you need to go and find these contractors that you can push what you are great at. 
Mm-hmm. And it was like an epiphany, like, oh, you're absolutely correct. I can actually make a lot of money doing this. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, Jen, I know we've got something exciting coming up. Where can they find you? And what is that exciting thing? Yes. So for the beauty world, if you are into the beauty world. So I actually merged with a company called Tat Extract. And I'm very excited about this because I do train a lot of um, estheticians um, in the industry And Tad Extract is an organization that has really came about about sex trafficking. So a lot of people don't understand that when women or men um, get into sex trafficking, they actually are branded with a logo. There's a little brand that you get. It's almost like a like a little code, right, that you get tattooed. And the the reason why this whole thing came about is because laser is really harsh and it's really actually traumatic for the skin and it's really um it hurts quite a bit Mm -hmm. and so this company we have launched and brought in a non-laser tattoo removal it's not saline it's actual science it actually really pulls that pigment out within the first couple sessions it's amazing and um so i actually do one-on-one training for entrepreneurs well for you know, people in the aesthetics world, it could be tattoo world, aesthetics world, even if you're not in that industry and it's something that you're interested in, I can help you to get into that. So it's a non-laser tattoo removal. I travel around the world and I educate on that. And we have classes upcoming all the time. And so if you want to hear more about that, definitely PM me but we are going to offer a lot of um, extra incentives, a lot of education, and that is going to be in my Facebook group. And so the group is called Entrepreneurs in the Beauty World. And so we'll be launching a lot of that in there. Um, And so if you guys are interested in that, please PM me or know anybody that would be interested in it. Um, it's, It's just a fabulous thing. And then for me, as well as my companies is um, I always give back to um, that organization. And so if you guys are watching this uh, or if you're listening this to this on iTunes or Spotify or whatever it is, just go ahead and look in the show notes because we will have the link to the Facebook community there and on any other platforms, we'll put it in the description for this Facebook live. We'll put it in the comments so you can click and ask to join. And by all means, if you know somebody who has a tattoo parlor or is an esthetician and would love to have a philanthropic drive behind a service that they do, this is a phenomenal opportunity for you. And Jen is going to be doing a live training in there for you guys to get you started on this idea of potentially bringing in two sources of income without you doing much of anything new at all. It's super, it's super simple, right, Jen? Absolutely. Yeah. Super simple. Awesome. Well, Jen, any last words for our emerging entrepreneurs or business leaders that are listening to your story today? I just want to let everybody know that, you know, um, don't give up, keep pushing, keep pushing to your journey and your journey always, it always shifts. It might, it might go into a totally different, uh, arena and you just have to honor it and own it. And, um, don't ever, don't ever give up. You know, I, I listen to this amazing man on YouTube a lot. He inspires me and he said, how sad is it to be stressed, to go to bed stressed and tired in the morning and not want to wake up and keep sleeping in. It's almost like, um, you're, you're living every day to, to die. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus the fact of you should be so excited to wake up in the morning, to see the sunrise, to enjoy the day. And I feel like all of us literally are like zombies that walk every single day doing the same damn thing every day. And we're not enjoying our lives every single day. We're not taking that walk. We want to every day because we have all of these things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, it's making your life accustomed to what you want in your life going forward. I love that. I'm getting a little bit of echo. No, I'm good. I love yeah. that. And I completely agree with you. And I recently had the revelation that 
I have most of my time is filled with doing fun things like being here with you, Jen. And I know that you're living a similar life, getting to travel all over the country, getting to spend days with your grandbaby, getting to have amazing times with your partner. And so if you guys are craving that kind of life, definitely ask Jen to ask to join Jen's group that we will link in the description. And I do want to see if there's any comments that are coming up. I see we're going to be monitoring the comments after we even stop this live. So by all means, if you did that exercise, five things that you're good at, five things that you um, that you are passionate about, and Jen will respond in the comments. I'll respond in the comments because we want to help you get to the other side. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.